Since we are filling the pool, are we using volume or surface area? Volume, right? We're filling it up. Is this a prism, a pyramid? Which is it? It's a prism, yeah? So every prism, the volume of a prism, is always area of the base times the height, correct? Now, area of the base is tricky, right? Because what do we want to say is the base? Pardon? When I say the base of something, what do we want it to be, Antonio? We want it to be the bottom, right? But it's not really, is it, Antonio? Yeah, the base in this case is the front because a prism is just a repeated shape, isn't it? So if I stack this weird shape up backwards, because this is essentially backwards, right? This becomes the base. Is everybody cool with that? So the area of the base is really this shape. Yes? And it was 8 by 15 by 1. Agreed? How are you going to find the area of that? Because it's not a shape that we have a formula for, is it? Kiara? I would cut it in half. Making this part 1 and this part 7, yes? So now I've got this, length times width, 15 times 1 is what? 15. And base, 7, times height, 15, divided by 2? Fifty-two point five. Agreed? So the area of the base, what do I do with those two numbers? Add them up to get 67.5, yeah? There's the area of the base. Now what does the height become? Six. So what do we get for a volume? 67.5 times six. Agreed? Everybody cool? Now you get your calculator, you find out what that is. Uh, 360 and 42, 402, 405. That's how big the pool is. Got it? Am I filling the pool to the brim? How full am I filling the pool? 85%. So I got to multiply that by what? 0.85. To get, I'm filling the pool, whatever that is. 344.25. That's how many meters cubed it is. Now, I can do one of them in an hour, so what do I got to divide that by? 1.8. And I get whatever that is for an answer. Something around 180. 191. 191.25 hours. Everybody cool? Right? Now, was there anything new there? What was new? Yara? Using the percentage. But that's old news, right? Okay. And what else was new, Antonio? Yeah, the prism had a weird shape, right? But we know how to do it from going back to what we know from before. We bring previous knowledge to now. Cool? Okay. This causes trouble for people. How do I do this question? One liter is a thousand centimeters cubed, right? I have 191 point what? No, that's not right. That, that was time. 344 point what? 25. That's how many meters cubed I have, right? 
but I have liters in centimeters cubed. So how do I do that question? Multiply by a thousand? Okay. So if I take that and multiply by a thousand, I will get the right answer, yes? So 344 and then 123, yes? 250 liters. Now, Antonio is able to do that very quickly because he deals with decimeters and deciliters and things, right? Because he's European. A great many of you probably didn't know that decimeters cubed are liters, did you? Did any of you know that except Antonio? Of course not. So you had to convert this, yes? Now, because it's cubed, is it one meter to 100 centimeters. Is this true when I'm cubing? Yes or no? Is this the conversion you would use? No, it's not. Why? Pardon me? I need to count, I need to cube it, don't I? Here's what I'm saying. And I've already drawn this for you guys once with a different one. If that's one meter and that's one meter and that's one meter, that's one cubic meter, yes? Right? Length times width times height. One times one times one is one. Everybody cool? All right. Now, what if I make it centimeters? How long is this in centimeters? A hundred centimeters. How long is this? A hundred centimeters. How long is this? A hundred centimeters. So one meter cubed equals what in centimeters? A hundred times a hundred times a hundred, which is a big old number, isn't it? It's a million. So one meter cubed is a million centimeters cubed, right? Everyone agree? So this meters cubed, I got to add a whole bunch of zeros and then divide by a thousand, don't I? I want meters cubed and centimeters cubed, yes? So I had 344.25 meters cubed. I want centimeters cubed. So it's times a million centimeters cubed. So that gives me a whole bunch of zeros, doesn't it? How many times does the decimal place move for each zero? Once. So I need to move six places, yes? Right? So I get 344,250,000. Right? Centimeters cubed. Now, one liter equals that. So what do I divide that by? 1,000. And then I get to cancel the zeros. To get 344,250 liters. Does everybody pick up what I'm putting down? Because most people probably didn't do this right. Unless you remember the cubing thing. Does everybody see what I'm saying? The conversions you have are only four straight lines. Okay? If you need to convert surface area or volume, you need to remember surface area has how many straight lines? Two, length and width. Volume has how many straight lines? Three, length, width, and depth. And all three need to be converted. Is everybody good? Okay. Now, this, this, believe it or not, is my favorite question in all math of every level. Because it's almost never done right. 
when you read that question, do I care about volume or surface area? I'm filling up the net. Is it volume or surface area? Okay, so I would like to hear some answers. Somebody did this question. What, how many goal, how many goals will fill the puck? How many pucks will fill the goal? Just give me some numbers. Somebody did this question. Mark? So Mark says it's 116 pucks. Okay. Nobody else even tried it? That hurts. Mark, how did you get 116? What did you do? So I first found the uh, volume of the, like the inside of the net. So you found the volume of the net, and because it's a rectangle, it was easy. It was length times width times height, right? Mm -hmm. So Mark's first move was volume of the net. And since the net is a prism, Mark went length times width times depth, right? And got 1.22 times 1.83 times 1. So 1.22 times 1.83 is what? Whatever it was, yeah. right? You got a number. Volume of the net. And then what did you do? And then I found the volume of the puck. So then first, step one, you found the volume of the net. Step two, you found the volume of a puck. Then what did you do? And then once I had both volumes, I uh, just to see how many times the volume of the puck went into the volume. So you did volume of net divided by volume of puck. Does everyone agree? Does that make logical sense? I'm filling it with pucks. So if the net is so big, I can divide it by how many pucks fit into it. Is that okay? Antonio says no. Does anybody else? Are you happy with his thinking? Does that make sense? Okay, I've got a certain volume. I'm filling it with littler chunks of volume. So I divide the big volume by the little volume. Is that okay? All right, Antonio. Pucks don't fit together perfectly. So one sec, Antonio, let me draw what you're saying. There's the net, yes? Agreed? The pucks fit perfectly this way, don't they? They go right against each other. But if I look down from the top view, the net looks like this, yes? There's the goal line. Everyone cool? What do the pucks look like? Circles. So what is this? empty space. So can you do volume? You could do volume if pucks were square, couldn't you? It's kind of surface area, but again, not quite, isn't it? Uh, 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 Antonio. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this right here is 7.62 on a puck, yes? Yeah, and I will do the same in the other way. Yep, so we've got 7.62 this way, and we've got the pucks going backwards, 7.62, yes? And up and down, they're 2.54, yes? That's the space they take up. So, how wide is the net? Yeah, does it matter which one I use? No. So, across here, I have 1.83 meters, and I'm dividing that by 7.62 centimeters. Can I do that? What's wrong with that math? Doesn't have the same unit, so I got to convert. So I got 183 divided by 7.62, correct? That's how many pucks will fit across here. Whatever that answer is. One eighty-three divided by seven point six two. 
24.01. So how many pucks will fit across the net? 24, because I can't get the fourth, fifth one in there, and I can't put in 0 0.01 of a puck, can I? So I can fit 24 pucks this way, yes? How deep is the net? One meter. So that was 24. So one meter is 100 divided by what? 7.62. Because, as Antonio says, they're a circle. So it's the same this way and this way, yes? So I go to my calculator. 100 divided by 7.62. How many pucks will fit that 13? So I got 13 pucks this way, yes? How many pucks fit up and down? 122 divided by what? 2.54 to get? 122 divided by 2.54. 48 pucks up and down. So what is my what is my net measured in now? This is centimeters. This is pucks, isn't it? So I'm building a prism out of pucks. So this is my length, my width, and my depth of pucks. So what do I do with those three numbers to find the volume of pucks that fit in there? Multiply. So the volume of pucks is length times width times height, which is 13 times 48 times 24, which is whatever it is. 13 times 48 times 24. 14,976. And I don't want anyone to feel bad because in all the years I've been giving this question, the seven years I've been teaching here, I've had it gotten right like twice because everybody wants to do volume. Everybody understand? Did you ha do you have the tools to do it correctly? Yeah. But as Mark, Mar it's volume. And I'm not picking on you, Mark, because you appear to be the only one that actually tried it. But as soon as Antonio said pucks are circles, you knew exactly where you went wrong, right? Picking up what I'm putting down? Please, please, please remember, the math is easy. The thinking is difficult. Does everybody understand? That is what happens in math 10, 11, and 12. The math doesn't get that much harder. The thinking about it before you do a calculation is what has changed from grade 9. Okay? And again, why do I give you wicked hard questions in the practice? Because if you can figure out the practice, how easy is the real thing going to be? Right? Practice harder than you need to play the game. Then when it's game time, you kick ass. Got it? Um... Nobody ever does the second part of this question because nobody ever wants to guess about the size of the room. Right? It's pretty tall. This room is pretty crazy because it's got that extra roof bit, yeah? So that's why I used estimate and I wanted you to explain your reasoning. If you tell me what you did, even if your numbers are wonky, I can still give you marks, yeah? Because we've all proven that sometimes you guys don't know how long something is, right? That's why we did that very first exercise where you had to estimate the height of your desk. Some people said 30 centimeters. Desk is this tall, right? Picking up what I'm putting down? Because none of you really know how long a meter is. How long is a meter? 100 centimeters. How long is 100 centimeters? 1,000 millimeters. How long is 1,000 millimeters? Uh, one meter. Ha <laughs> Myers, got you. Right? But nobody actually said a meter is this long. Picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So the first thing, did anybody try this? 
I know you did, Mark, and I'm pretty sure Antonio did. Um, what's the problem with this question? Where is the trick in this question? Is it surface area or is it volume? Surface area, right? But you only want the lateral, don't you? You guys have picked up a can of soup. Is there any paper on the top? No, it's only this part. So what's the formula for a cylinder? 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, right? What's the only part of that that matters? 2 pi r h. So that's the only thing you got to use. 2 pi, what's my r? 4.25. What's my h? 12. And that's going to give you one can, right? Which is uh, 12 times 4 is 48, 12 times that 51 times 2, 102 pi, yeah? Then what do you got to do with that number to find out how many cans a day? That's one can. How many cans do they make a day? So what do I do with that? Times 100,000. Everybody cool? I don't care what the number is. It's not important. Everybody with me? The process is what's important. Then, estimate the classroom walls. Now, I forgot to tell you guys, I didn't care how you did this. I really didn't. Right? If you just said, forget that little cutout piece and only did the walls, forget the windows and pretend everything had to be covered, that's fine. It doesn't matter. The point is you had to take a guess at the height of the room and guess at the room surface area. But what's the trick? Classroom walls. Would you cover the floor? Would you cover the ceiling? No. So could you just use the surface area of the room? No, you had to remove the ceiling and the floor. Picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. How could you have done this yesterday when I was not here? What would you have needed to do? Yeah. So how did you get the length of the room? I didn't leave you with... You just guess it, right? Remember at the beginning of the unit, we did those estimates, or reference, I mean? We said one step was about a meter. So what could you have done to find out how wide the room was? Walked and walked. And then compared to height, right? Right? So the room is this wide. Does that go up? Is it about the same as up? Is it 2 thirds? Whatever. You picking up what I'm putting down? You would find your guess and you would work it out. Everybody cool? I get a ton of different answers. Because sometimes people say, well, I'm not talk I'm not doing the talk. Because that's not a normal room. So I'm just doing the walls. Which is fine, I don't care. Because again, do I care about the right answer? Or do I care about the fact that you're trying to do math? I only care about the math, right? So what could you have done? Well, if I were to explain this, I would have said I paste the length and width. Length and width. Two, I used that to estimate the height. Estimate height. Three, found each wall. Four, added it up. And five divided by divided by my answer in A. That's all you needed to do. Right? Everybody cool? And the last one was the funky bike. How far could you travel in the turn of one of the front wheel? So 
So that is this distance. Yeah, Ooh, I should do that in red. What measurement is that? Two times pi r, right? Because it's the dot. It's uh, the circumference. Circumference equals two pi r or pi d. Yes. What's the d? Fifty-two inches. Fifty-two pi, right? So you do that on your calculator, and you'd get about one hundred and fifty-six, right? One hundred and sixty-three. So it's 163 inches, which you would then convert to feet in inches by dividing by 12 and then figuring it out. Um, it is, 12 goes into that 10 times, 12 times, 13 times, 13 times 12 is 156, right? So it was 13 feet, 7 inches. Yeah? And meters and centimeters, I did 163 inches times 2.54 centimeters to get whatever that is, which I can't do in my head. 140 centimeters? No. Sorry. 440. 14. 414 centimeters, which is 4 meters and 14 centimeters. Yeah? How many times to go a kilometer? Well, if I can go 4 meter, 4.14 meters in one turn, I need to go how many kilometers? 1,000 meters divided by what? 4.14. Yeah? To get whatever that is. And then how many times for the small wheel? You need the circumference of the small wheel, which is pi d again, which is 18. So it's 18 pi. So it's 1,000 divided by, oh, 18 pi. Then I got to turn that into centimeters. And it's 1,000 divided by 18 pi in centimeters. Cool? Again. Do I care about the numbers? No. I want you to attempt it. And I know that if I walk around and I look at everybody's sheets, I'm going to see some blank sheets. I'm going to see some with nothing done. I'm going to see some with everything done. I want to do that and make myself sad. Okay? Now, you guys have should have this page in your notes. It should be the next thing you see. Yes? Your job today is you're going to do those five questions right now, and then I'm going to come back, go over it, and I'm going to come back with your review assignment. Okay, i got to go photocopy it. So you're going to work on these. I'm going to copy this. You're going to finish this overnight. I'll give you some time tomorrow. We're going to mark it tomorrow. And then you're going to have it to study from over the weekend because you write your test on this whole unit next week. Cool? Yes, it's bathroom time to bathroom time. Do what you need to do now. You've got those five questions to do, and then you're going to have this when I print it. Okay?
I realized after I went downstairs and printed this and wasted all that time, you guys already have this. It's in your books. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah, Kaylee. Yeah. Maybe. If I can find one. I'm looking. Yeah. All right, so. Um, oh, and I left this recording. That was stupid, too.